Hello, everyone. My name is Scott Costello. I'm the Director of Cloud EPM here at Key Performance Ideas, and today I'm going to share with you a couple tips and tricks on using web forms. Uh, these are things that have been available for a couple years now, but I don't see them deployed at many organizations, and I don't think a lot of people know about these nuggets, so I thought I'd share them with you. Um, the first one I'm going to share is around making forms dynamic. Now you're looking at a screen, um, this is the cloud environment, this is planning and budgeting cloud service, specifically EPBCS. Uh, so it might look a little different, but this works the exact same way for on-premise solutions um, as well. Uh, just the navigation is a little bit different here. So I'm going to go into a form to show you what the end result looks like. Uh, I'm going to pick a product form here. So I built this form, and what's unique about the form is the rows are driven by my point of view. So I see this all the time for people doing things around products or different groups um, within the organization where they want a subset of the information to show up in their rows um, instead of displaying all descendants of things and using ones and zeros to start to suppress things. With this trick, it allows you to have product both in your point of view and in your row, or really any dimension in your point of view and in your rows. If I change this from one group to another, here's my product dimension. Here are four different children of it, and under each one of those, they have um, several descendants. I'm going to say, let's just do the smartphones. And when I pick smartphones, I see those rows display. Same with things like notebook. If I just pick this group, I'll only see the children or the descendants of notebook get displayed. So here are my notebooks. Here's my total notebook based on this point of view. Um, so how do you build something like this where I can make my form dynamic? Well, it's a, it's a couple steps, actually. Um, you've probably all seen this when you go into form designer. But I'm going to start with what were called variables. Now, to get to variables when you're an administrator, again, in the on-premise world, you go to the um, administration menu and you'll see a variables option. Um, in the PDCS world, the variables are through the navigator. Um, and what you want to do is create a new variable. So this is, again, not a substitution variable, but what's called a user variable, which means the user has the ability to change this. Um, and you make it dynamic. So to add or edit these, again, you can just click the action button, add, um, and you define what you want that group to be. So you notice when I picked all groups, it only went down to the children of all product. Uh, the next thing as a user that needs to happen is that is a, they need to define what their variable is. So, um, when I go into the application itself, I have an option as a user to define my variables. Uh, and I can do that right through the uh, tools button here. You'll see the user variables. Again, I'm in as an admin, but the end users would see this option as well. And then the end user can decide what do I want my variable to be. And this can be nice, you know, instead of having all complicated security and things like that, users can define these variables and say, this is all I want to see for this particular form or this particular report. So in this example, this user is saying I want product group or notebook as my variable for product group. Now the real build on this comes in the form design. So if we go to our form designer, then this looks uh, similar in both the cloud environment as well as, uh, as well as the on-premise environment. This form is pretty typical. So it has the typical properties. I have my layout of what I want in my point of view, what I want in my page. Um, and as I'm designing the form, I have this option that not a lot of people are going to go to. A lot of times we'll play with things around precision and you do things in the context menu, but this dynamic user variable, um, if you enable that, you can take advantage of any of the variables that have been created. So product group, again, was one variable we created. And as a user, I went in and assigned myself notebook as the variable. 
Now, how do I get it into the rows in my layout? Um, you do that by just defining it as that user variable. When you check the box to say enable, uh, dynamic user variable is what makes it put it into the point of view. If I edit this, you'll see that um, I have all my products here like I normally would, but instead of selecting products, I can select the user variables that have been created and say, okay, I want it to be a function of everything in that product group. So in this example, I said, let's put it children of whatever is selected in the product group. So because notebook is my selection, I should see only notebook uh, children displayed. Notice there's an ampersand in front of it, just like a substitution variable, but that's the difference between a user variable and substitution variable is the user has control over it. And again, if we just run this uh, particular form and bring it all together, Again, you'll see I have notebook here as my point of view, and the children of notebook uh, is what gets displayed. And as a user, if I want to change this to something like um, tablets, I can just click on tablets, and because my rows are dynamic enough to say just bring in the children of it, it's going to bring in just the children of tablets. So a neat little trick, again, to help the user experience work with a subset of information. Um, and what's nice, too, is this also works in SmartView. So if I uh, just refresh here my sheet, I have that same point of view right here. And as I change my point of view from one to another, now let me pick smartphone, click refresh, my rows are going to update with just the smartphone numbers. So that's one trick for making your forms dynamic, using that dynamic uh, user variable. Another thing that's pretty slick is the ability to add members on the fly. So if we look at a new product form in this example, um, I created this form, and this time I entered in my rows all the different types of, of products that are available. I said, let's bring in all products. Uh, but at the bottom, I created the ability to, for the user to add new products and to budget for those products. Uh, and as a user, what I can do is literally right-click and say, I'm going to add a new product. And when I click on that, I'll be prompted, um, you know, for what is that new product name. Uh, I can just define it here. For example, I'll just call it product. V. And what it's going to do is it's going to add that new product um, directly into the form under my new product grouping. So with just a right click, I can let the users actually add members uh, to the application. Now, there's a trick to this. They're not really adding members to the to the application. How does this all get set up? Well, there's a feature within the dimensions of the application. So if I launch my dimension editor, um, you'll see this, this one uh, property. And again, this is kind of like on the previous uh, discussion we had where you, you have that checkbox where you can enable things. Um, the same holds true for this feature. So if I go to my product dimension, and I look at my new product, and I edit that new product. You'll see a function here at the bottom that says enable for dynamic children. Um, you can specify the number of children, and you can even specify how that information gets accessed. So by checking the box, um, what you're essentially doing is creating these members ahead of time. And again, you can put more than 10. Um, you can put as many as 100. The inherit means what do you want security to do? 
uh, inherit the security of the parent member is what we typically see, or you could have any of those children be read, write, uh, or none in terms of security. So by checking that box, what we're going to do, what that does essentially is it'll create 10 dummy members for new product that aren't visible to anyone. In S space behind the scene, the, those members get added and you have to do a refresh after you check this so that those members are in the queue. Um, but then what we do is we go through a process of just assigning a new name to that dummy member that's been added behind the scene. So how do we go about doing that? Um, well, again, this is a, a couple step process. Uh, the first step is you have to create a rule. So a rule that will prompt people for inputting um, that member information. And in order to create the rule, we want it to be a, a prompting rule or a variable. So I have to go into my variable designer and define a prompting variable for product. So if I go into my uh, particular plan type, this time I chose my OEPFS, um, I'm going to have new product as my variable. So this is the first step you really have to do. Um, you give it whatever name you want. You need to define it as a member type. And when you define it as a member type, you'll see this column that says, hey, is this a dynamic member parent? Remember, we had to find new product as a dynamic member parent. We're saying, yeah, this prompt we want to be a part of that dynamic member parent um, called new product. We're going to give the prompt the same name as the parent um, just to keep it consistent. And you could put in any sort of text you want here, checking the box RTP. Again, RTP stands for runtime prompt. That's the prompt that you saw when I clicked on the checkbox. Um, so now that I have a prompt created, I actually need to create a, a rule for it, and it's going to be the, the simplest rule you've ever created. Because um, the rule, all it does is invoke that prompt. It doesn't do any sort of calculation or anything like that. It's really just adding that thing, um, invoking that prompt, and then allowing you to rename that member uh, based on um, the dummy member that's kind of created behind the scenes. So you'll see here, uh, there's no begin, there's no end, there's actually no script to this rule whatsoever, um, except for a prompt of that variable called new product. The one thing that you do have to do is in that dimension where you want to add new members, you have to call upon that prompt, and you have to check this box that says create dynamic members. So this is what's going to say whatever people type in, add that to the dummy member behind the scene. So I've created this really simple rule using this real simple uh, runtime prompt. And the last step I need to do is create a menu or a right click that's going to allow me to uh, particularly play with that. So I'm going to create an action menu. And again, menus are what allow you to do the right clicks on any particular form. Um, and then we'll add it to the form. You see I have a, several types of uh, menus here already, but at the very top is my add product. So add product is the name of the menu, um, and by creating that menu, I'll just show you what that looks like here. I'm saying let's launch the business rule. Let's give it a label called add product, so when I right click you'll see that word add product. Um, launch a business rule, launch a rule called add new product, and all the add new product does, again, is uh, rename the AW member behind the scenes. So last, once I have the menu, I need to make sure my form calls upon that menu. So I'm going to go into my form designer, under products, new product, and then my other options, again, I'm just saying make the add product option come up. So a few steps you have to do, you have to enable things in the dimensions, create the runtime prompt, create the rule, create the menu, add it to the form. Uh, if you follow those steps, you'll have a dynamic form that works the same way in Excel as it does over the web, and I have the ability to, again, refresh this in SmartView and see my information in SmartView um, or right-click right in SmartView and add the new product 
here as well. I'll just wait for this to refresh for a second. Um, you see my product Z that I added earlier, but I said in SmartView, I'm prompted with the same add new product. I can give it whatever name I want. Product X, I click OK. And it should add that basically back to the form. That was my demo for today. Hopefully that was uh, insightful. Um, feel free to play with this on your own, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you again.